Hello, I'm, I'm Giovanni Landi. I work for ETT SPI. We are um, an Italian creative industry. We work mainly in the field of cultural heritage valorization and conservation. We design and develop interactive installations for museums, as well as designing and uh, developing entire interactive exhibitions and entire museums. What I will be presenting today are two applications of augmented reality to the cultural heritage field. The object of the, the first use case I'm, I'm going to present is an experimental application we designed for, um, we designed and we, that we are developing for the restorers to be able to work in teams. We also wanted them to be able to access the huge databases that they mainly uh, multispectral imagery uh, that they collect uh, intensively during their surveys. And we wanted them to have all this information available and 3D localized directly on the piece of art. So uh, a statue of Leonardo da Vinci uh, that you can find in Milan in front of the La Scala Opera Museum was completely 3D mapped and reconstructed. And then a mobile application uh, will use uh, SLAM tracking to allow restorers that maybe work in different teams uh, specialized on different aspects of the of the restoration to insert and edit uh, localized uh, annotation directly on the statue and browse the multispectral imagery data sets that are multi-layered that can be UV mapped on directly on the statue. Next I will show you how the results of these R&D activities have been successfully transferred to the museum market and are actually uh, part of a visitor application. Uh, we worked with the uh, Galleria dell'Accademia Museum, is one of the most uh, important Italian museum. Uh, many of you may know the Vitruvian Man, that it, it's displayed there. And together, in partnership with Samsung Italian, with, with Italia, we developed a, a, guy, a visitor guide application that beside an indoor positioning system based on uh, beacons, uh, features two, three, three playful uh, augmented reality sections. The application is of course multi-language and it features uh, uh, different sections for, for different ages. There's for example uh, a kids sections visit for kids visiting the room. In fact the first AR um, user experience is a treasure hunt. Uh, the, the visitor are given a question and then they have to find the right painting amo among the, all the ones uh, inside the room that is the right one. Another use of AR that you can find in this app consists in a series of localized highlights that can be visualized directly on uh, particular areas of the painting that better describe uh, uh, peculi peculiarities of the painting and maybe uh, particulars that are not uh, immediately visible directly on the painting where they are. The third section features a playful use of the multispectral imagery that I, will, I was talking about before. And this data, as I was saying, this, data, this kind of data is intensively collected during the restoration process, but it's never used uh, to engage the visitors. Uh, the visitors, through this application, can point at the painting and uh, by scratching on their screen, they can unveil details or particulars of the painting that maybe are visible only uh, through infrared or maybe th through x-ray. Uh, these details can be really interesting. They can be previous versions of the painting that lay beneath uh, the actual ones or they can be, the, uh, you, you can find hidden uh, signatures or annotations made by the artists. Um, there can be previous attempt made by the painter to represent the same subject and uh, of course, uh, suddenly you can find changes that occurred after definitely not conservative restoration uh, processes. Here is a video that shows the, the application and its use. You can see the, the treasure runs that uses simple image recognition. Uh, the user is given a question, a, a hint, and then he has to point at all the paintings in the room and he is notified if he, if he spotted the right painting on, 
or he has to go on looking, looking for the, the, the right one. This is the multispectral imagery section. As you can see, you can point at the, at the painting and scratch on the screen to see what lay beneath. And these are the feature highlights. These are all contents that are not so accessible in, and maybe are not, they never end in the visitor guide and they, have, they are really interesting in, if they are given to the audience directly in front of the painting. So they can put away the tablet and then look the painting with different eyes. So I'd be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Do you think that artists uh, going from this point forward uh, that understand that the multispectral revelation of the underlying structure of their paintings that helped them actually you know, make the painting that weren't intended to be looked at or seen might come up with different techniques to create their your basis paintings maybe with projection mapping so they can paint and there is no nothing to discover underneath the work. There's just the work itself. Um, and do you think in the past, if artists anticipated that there would be such a multispectral technique that they would have refrained from <laughs> using the b base drawings I or the like? I think it's strictly connected with the, with the kind of restoration process that is going on right now. Uh, in the 19th century, the restoration was quite not conservative. The 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 artists from the 19th century had the idea they could make a better painting, so they actually changed it. So the aim of the restoration processes right now, contemporary restoration process, is to uh, give uh, the painting its original aspect. And so all this uh, multispectral imagery is uh, collected uh, with the intention to uh, in, in, have the best strategy to conservate and uh, give back the painting their, their original aspect. We are, we are using this kind of data to make a playful experience that can gain the interest of the visitors for a piece of art. So I'm sure the artist would be happy. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Giovanni, hey, uh, I remember I, being on uh, the panel with you last yes, uh, yes, year. Yes, 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 we were in the same panel, yes. I love how your work is coming along. It's oh, yeah. wonderful, it's wonderful. Now it's in, in a museum. <laughs> yeah, it's great, hey, as it should be. Uh, now, I want to flip the question around. I'm wondering whether contemporary artists could use this technique of using the layering and such to make new works that could be, you know, revelatory to the audience. In other words, going and painting one painting and then hiding it under, under, under another, under another, under another, under another. Of course, that could be a nice way of make multi-layer <laughs> paintings that can be seen in x-rays. But you need, you need superpowers for that. So we are here. Um, we have time for one more question. So we're doing also some, some research on this aspect, and one big thing that we struggle with right now is on one side you can bring some very interesting content, and, and because, I mean, obviously if you don't have this explanation, it's very difficult to understand what, what's the meaning of the other work. And on the other side, you create a distance uh, between, between you and, I mean, the, the viewer and the original art. And when you spend two hours to get into this gallery, I mean, because it's often painful to get in this museum, you have a long queue, it's really ha to have a better connection with the real picture. So how we, and we don't have the solution, it's really something that we struggle with, uh, how we bring this information but without creating a distance between, uh, or uh, filters between us and the original uh, picture, which is the... I, I don't know the answer, but what I can say, for me it was really fascinating to work with uh, art historians and restorers because they, they have a relation with a piece of art that is much more uh, physical and emo emotional. So I think that we can, um, transferring this kind of uh, experiences to the visitors co could of course create some, could change the relation that you can, that you can feel toward a piece of art. I hope I answered, so. I think you did. 
You do? I think you answered it, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Giovanni. Thank you.